How do you find that peace that surpasses all understanding all day, every day? It comes from Jesus. If you do not get up and start your day with Jesus, let's just talk about the heroic minute where the minute you open up your eyes, you say, thank you, Jesus, for another day where I can glorify you with my life. If you have a crucifix in your house, kiss Jesus on it and thank him for all of his pain and blood and wounds and his love for us. At the very minimum, give him a minute, right? I mean, you should give him more. So maybe you sit down with the daily readings. Again, some of you are not Catholic. So open up the Bible and start reading a chapter, maybe a verse or two. It doesn't even have to be a lot, but sit with it. Allow God to speak to you in some way through his word. His word is living. It's breathing. What you read today in a gospel is not going to be the same as what you read two years ago or in another two years from now. But it is a daily, daily process. People have heard this story before. I'm going to say it quickly, but some are new. When I first started praying, I wasn't consistent. One day I'd be on two days I'd be off, three days I'd be on, two days I'd be off. And one day in the gospel, the word daily slapped me in the face. This was the verse. Pick up your cross daily and follow me. So I sat there for a long time wondering, what in the world does this word daily mean? probably 15 minutes until he finally put in my head the thought of, hello, you have to pray with me daily. None of this on and off, on and off stuff. Because when you give yourself to me and you give me your currency, which is your time, right? The time, I'm sorry, let me rephrase that. Our currency with God is our time. So when we give him our time, And we sit and we focus. He's so grateful and graces are going to flow. Just watch. So for you to have that peace, you've got to start your day with God and give him your time. Because when you worry about the world too much and all the to do's and things that are on your list, Your day isn't going to be filled with peace, no doubt. You're going to be too concerned about the world. Instead of saying, Jesus, I invite you in to my hectic day today. I ask for you to help me get everything done in your time, in your peace. It's just like the manna falling from heaven. They had to go out and gather it every single day. And if you remember, they were able to gather more with the Sabbath the day before so that they had enough to survive. But God didn't let them gather up weeks worth of it. In other words, you can't pray one day and expect to have a seven days worth of peace. It just doesn't work that way. We have to be in the presence of God all day. This is why St. Paul says that we should be praying incessantly every day. And so what does that mean? That just means talking to Jesus all day long, inviting him in to everything that you are doing, whether it be your budget at your, at your house, whether it be grocery shopping, whether it be a meeting at work, or even going to mass, going to church, even in your prayer, Lord Jesus, please help me pray. I always pray to the Holy Spirit to help me learn how to pray more. 
and to hear his promptings and his voice. And the more you do this, the more you need it. (laughs) It's funny how that works. Not every day is going to be a perfectly beautiful, focused prayer day, but at least give God 30 minutes, please. Every single day. What does that mean? Get up 30 minutes earlier. Now in my area, it's getting a little bit warmer. I don't know. It keeps changing. It's now 56 degrees during the day. That's Fahrenheit. I cannot wait till I can get outside and start the day and watch the sun come up while I am in prayer. I did that this morning. It's starting to get light about 5.15 here. I'm going to have to start getting up at 4 pretty soon because it is bright at 5 a.m. in the summertime. But the best thing for me is to watch the sun rise where I can be immersed in God's creation and start the day with him. And then throughout the day, just keep talking to him. Lord, please help me. I'm, I'm, this is my prayer lately. And I'm praying to Mary and St. Joseph, all the holy angels and saints, and all the souls in purgatory too, to help me not get wrapped up in finishing my house in Tennessee and waiting for the quote for the, for the retreat home and thinking about all the things that I would have to do to sell this house and to move If I allow myself to worry and to freak out and get anxious about all this stuff and to worry about money, then I am not trusting in God, his timing, his plans. So I've said, I can't tell you how many times this morning, Jesus, take over. I give this to you. And it may be a thousand times that I say that today. But every time I say it, I truly mean it. Like, Lord, I know if this is your will, you will make it happen. All too often we worry about the future or we have big things that we have in our minds and plans and all of that kind of stuff. And we can get overwhelmed. Maybe you're a person that looks at your past and you regret so many things and you're reliving your sins and you're not forgiving yourself or you're reliving the way that you lived your life. Thank you, God. I do not have that problem anymore, (laughs) but it is a thing. And when I mean a thing, I mean it's an attack. Satan doesn't want you to live in the present moment. And this is what I'm talking about. Living in the present moment is where you're going to find the peace of God. Why? Because God is right here, right now. Wherever you are, whatever you are doing, obviously you're listening to this podcast, but he's right there, right with you. Call out, Jesus, take over right now. Stop, do it. Jesus, take over. Please give me your peace and your joy in every circumstance that I have today. Help me finish these dishes. Help me finish this food that I'm making for myself or for my family. Be with me. Help me and and clean my house with me. Help me do my job with me. And when you invite him in like that, everything turns into a blessing because you have a house to clean and you have food to cook. You have a stove and utensils and pots and pans to cook in. Maybe you have a family to cook for. Things become different. They become blessings. If you have a job and you've got a lot to do, Hey, there's a blessing in the fact that you have a job. Then we look at life through the eyes of Jesus. There's such 
a difference when you live in the present moment. I always say, live your 24-hour journey today. This is all we have. We don't even know if we will be around by three or four hours from now. We don't even know if we'll be around 30 minutes from now. So why not live it the best that we can? with turning our lives over to Jesus and allowing him to do what he does, which is guide us and lead us and give us his peace and his joy and his love. Let's pray. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Holy Trinity, God, the Father, Jesus, the Son, Holy Spirit, living and breathing within us, sanctifying us, please, all three in one person come in to our hearts. Give us the desire to pray. Give us the desire to get up early and start our day with you because when we do, we know how much better our lives will be that day. Help remind us to bring you into everything we do today, even the simplest, most mundane things, so that we can see what a blessing it is to do these things with you. Mary, take our left hand and Your beloved spouse, the Holy Spirit, take our right, our guardian angel, grab our whole bodies and lead us to Jesus's sacred heart where there is healing and peace and love and joy. In your holy name, wait, oh, eep, up, forgot about our holy souls in purgatory. (laughs) Let's now pray for every person by name who has gone before us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth in all of our lives as it is in heaven. Please give us this day our daily bread, everything we need, Lord. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Okay, I have to tell you guys, I forgot. So, I had a dream of my husband and my dad together. Didn't make any sense, i got to be honest with you. It was something about us all working, and we were in an office building. It was just weird, a weird dream. But I didn't wake up sad. I kind of woke up thinking I was going to work, but then I (laughs) I was... You know, then reality comes into play and I'm like, oh, now I wonder, I wonder if that was just both of them saying, hey, we're here with you. You've got this. Because that's one of the things that I'm praying about a lot to St. Joseph is to be my spiritual father and to be my spiritual husband. I'm really putting myself in this Mary situation where You know, I'm all by myself doing things that I don't know how to do, right? I don't know how to finish a home. I've never sold a home, kind of, well, I did sell my town home, but, you know, we've lived here for 23 years. There's a whole lot to do. You know, I've never built a retreat home before. I'm just seriously throwing myself at God right now, saying, please, please guide me and lead me. And I have to do it all day, every day, because my tendency is to think about all the things that I have to do. And some of them aren't even 
going to be happening for months. So I need to live in the present day. And that's how I'm getting through, right? Every single day. And I'm not sad. I cry because, I don't know, I'm a crier. You all know that, Kendra the crier. (laughs) I call it the Holy Spirit gift of tears, and I would never trade it. Never trade it for anything. Because I'm really connected to my emotions and my feelings. And a lot of the time, it's just tears of gratefulness and gratitude and thankfulness, right? I'm just so grateful that I have faith. And it's seriously an exercise of suffering with joy and offering up my sufferings all the time. And that's the walk, right? All right, I do have to share something in the gospel. John 6, verses 44 through 51. Jesus said to the crowds, No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draw him, and I will raise him on the last day. It is written in the prophets, They shall all be taught by God. Everyone who listens to my Father and learns from him comes to me. Not that anyone has seen the Father, except the one who is from God. He has seen the Father. Amen, amen, I say to you, whoever believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate the manna in the desert, but they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven, so that one may eat it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give you is my flesh for the life of the world. Yes, I am accentuating words. Bread, eat, flesh, living bread, right? So that you will live forever. I want every Catholic that is listening to this to think of this when you receive Jesus into your body, your soul, your mind, your heart. That this is the flesh of Jesus. It is the living bread. When you receive the Eucharist, Holy Communion, you are protected. You have Jesus in you. And please try to pray for 15 minutes while Jesus is inside you. Beg him to help you. Beg him to heal you. Pray for petitions. Or honestly, we should just be thanking him. I read something a long time ago that a lot of people, oh, Jesus, do this, do that, do this, do that. Instead, we should just be thanking him. Thank you for offering your body, your flesh, that is only consecrated and transubstantiated by the priest's ordained hands in the mass, in the church that you handed down to us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Start thinking of all the blessings that you have, that you have a house, you have a car, you have electricity, you have food, you have jobs, you have families, you have health. And again, I don't know if you have health or not, but you know the blessings that you have. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That is the purpose of every Mass, is to worship God and the representation of Jesus at Calvary. And when we go up down that beautiful aisle like the bride to meet and consume our bridegroom into our bodies, our hearts, our souls, our minds, we should be thinking about offering ourselves up as the sacrifice as well, through Jesus to the Father. 
So offer up all of your sins. We should be bringing prayers and petitions down that aisle. That's when our angel, our guardian angel, is walking with us. Half the time, the angel walks up to the altar and has nothing in its hands to give because we're just walking and looking at the back of someone's head or we're, you know, trying not to step on the feet in front of us. We need to be offering something up or bringing petitions so that we can lay it on the altar. This is what they did in the Old Testament. They had specific things. Read Leviticus. God told them exactly how they need to worship. And that's exactly why the Catholic Church is the same way. How we need to worship God told us, meaning Jesus, told Peter, and then through tradition, capital T, they were not in a building. They were offering up Jesus in the Eucharist through the Catholic Church. They were hiding because they were being persecuted. Anyway, make sure that you bring your petitions up. Do not let your angel offer nothing. Because in the Old Testament, they had to say their sins and offer up, based on their sins, some sort of animal. So if your sins were little, maybe you'd come up with a dove. But if your sins were big, you might have to bring a bull in. And they had to speak them out loud. The difference was those high priests did not have the ordained hands and the priesthood by Jesus to forgive sins. Remember, when they were at the Last Supper, this is when the priesthood began. Jesus said, those sins you forgive are forgiven. Those sins you retain are retained. That was the power that Jesus gave them. But they, as human beings, don't have the power. In the confessional, they are in persona Christi, which means they're vessels of Jesus. And that's another thing you should think about when you're in confession, that you're speaking to Jesus himself, not Father Bob. I know I've said these things before, but hey, it takes 17 times. What a funny number. Some of you may know what I'm talking about. Others <laughs> may not. But 17 times for a person to learn something new, to understand it, and to be able to articulate it and repeat it to someone else. Repetition is important. Because there's so much to learn in the faith. All right. Now, get out in your day with Jesus, with his love and his peace, his kindness, his generosity. Call on him and bring him into everything. Lord Jesus, help me eat this food with me so that you can appreciate the fact that you have food. I mean, this is what it's about. And I guarantee you, you will find that peace all day, every day. But as Jesus said, you've got to come to me every day. You've got to be in my presence. Just like the manna falling down from heaven in the Old Testament, they could only get what they could get and gather for that day. It was enough to sustain them. And if they gathered more, it would rot. <laughs> okay, so we can't hoard Jesus and say, all right, we're going to do two hours worth of prayer today, and I'm not going to come talk to you for seven days until the next time I'm at Mass. Not going to happen. Good luck with that. All right, everyone, I love you all so much. Find something more with God, always. Soul, mind, and body. And have a blessed and inspired day.